That's literally going to be the last thing you see in the not so distant future when these SJW awoke non gender binary government assassination robots will break down your door for the latest microaggression or misgendering that you had in your own private thoughts. And then they'll do this Fortnite dance on your dead body. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski of WeAreChange.org. A lot of very important news to get into today, especially when it comes to the latest NSA spying allegations, the ever so politicized justice system, and a new call for the World Economic Forum for elites to have full, total control and supremacy over all the conversations that are happening on the internet. Yeah, lots to get into, so we're just going to jump right into it, of course, with the latest news from New York City, an absolutely failed city that can't do anything right including their own elections as the Democratic primary for mayor of New York City was plunged into utter chaos after 130,000 test run votes were being officially counted. Now, this is a big deal on many fronts because it's most likely who's going to win the Democratic primary will become the mayor of New York City. This was a very important election that New York City showed it can't even conduct fairly or effectively. With the New York City Board of Elections and announcing that they will have the final results in mid-July as totals for the election results were abruptly removed. All of this as mayoral candidate Eric Adams was in the lead, a candidate that is pro-police, which absolutely horrified a lot of the white progressives in New York City that, according to Michael Tracy, were going wild last night denouncing him as Eric Adams, the pro-police mayoral candidate, was getting the majority of black support. He, of course, is legitimately questioning the results of, of this election, which New York City admits is doing incorrectly. Could there be some shenanigans at play against Eric Adams, who previously said that young white affluent people are the ones leading the defund the police movement? Well, we don't know yet, but Trump is using this situation in order to issue a statement, which according to him bolsters his claim of fraud in the presidential election, specifically calling the New York City mayoral election an embarrassment and total mess. And uh, I think this is a great way of describing the current state of New York City. This, of course, is not the only thing that Donald Trump is starting controversies over, as of course he just released another statement saying that last year's sickness definitely did come from the Wuhan laboratory and there is more and more evidence suggesting that which of course we will be fully discussing on LukeUncensored.com. We're also going to be talking about a 12 year old whose life will never be the same because of a medical procedure that the ruling establishment is demanding everyone take. That, plus some videos from Katrina that will absolutely blow your mind away, all exclusively on LukeUncensored.com. And this is our own platform where we could say and do whatever we want, and we don't have to repeat discredited Bill Gates talking points, which is predominantly what YouTube allows, what it sees as authoritative sources, as the mainstream media has literally been acting like his fluffer and PR representatives literally promoting every deranged globalist idea that this man has. And as the mainstream media lives off of every single word promoted by Bill Gates, as they are seen as the quote authoritative sources, it's important to remind you that many people around Bill Gates accuse him of being an absolutely horrible human being. Now, especially with four Microsoft employees that have come forward and described him as a quote bully that verbally abused his co-workers or was trying to get them in bed. Yes, four employees have come forward and said that Bill Gates behaved as if he was the smartest person in the room while routinely mistreating the employees around him. Yep, not a surprise there. Shouldn't be a surprise there. Now, as billionaires hang out with Jeffrey Epstein and get adorned by the mainstream media, the U.S. federal government spying agencies are deciding to go after the true problem in this country, and that is those pesky journalists 
asking serious questions and trying to hold government officials accountable. As of course, we talked about this story yesterday. We have a massive claim by Tucker Carlson that came out and talked about how he had a whistleblower come forward and describe to him personal private communications that only the government could get after spying on him. It's important to note here that the NSA responded to this claim in a very broadly worded weird denial that didn't deny looking into Tucker Carlson's private communications. Where's the accountability? Where's the oversight? There is none here. There's only a blanket generalized statement that doesn't even disprove the main claim that Tucker Carlson has been making. Other people who are in hot water with the federal government going after them are Trump associates like the Trump Organization CFO who is expected to be charged tomorrow with crimes related to quote not paying taxes on employee benefits. It's important to note here that the U.S. justice system is becoming more and more political, going after every little infraction of any politician against the current regime, sorry, administration, while, of course, flaunting the laws, being able to do whatever they want, as many times routinely the mainstream media suppresses those stories as big tech censors them from the general public. And another great example of this is this latest story highlighting how Joe Biden used Air Force Two with his son, Hunter Biden, to entertain a Mexican billionaire who Hunter Biden had business dealings with. This is not the first time the vice president used Air Force Two that we heard about. The last story was with the Chinese, other business partners of, of Hunter Biden that were a part of or investing very large sums of money into Hunter Biden's personal business accounts. Now, these emails are, are damning. Will there be anything done about this huge conflict of interest during this abuse of power? Well. Most likely not, as again, we're living more and more in a two-tier justice system where literally a BLM rioter who knowingly smashed a car window into a toddler's face has avoided any jail time because his lawyer deemed it was, quote, an emotional time. There's video of this incident and people screaming, hey, there's a child in here. And then this suspect decided to bash the window that the child was in. How is this man able to walk free when literally a MAGA grandmother that had a door held for her by police decided to walk into the Capitol, take a selfie, walk out, is feeling the full brunt and prosecution of the FBI. If that is not a two-tier justice system, I don't know what is, and it's only being exemplified and bastardized more and more, especially in big cities, like what we saw with this 66-year-old elderly food vendor that was attacked during a pride party in Washington Square, leaving him with a broken nose and fearing for his life. Why? Well, according to him, he refused to swap a U.S. flag on his cart for a rainbow banner. He also had hot sauce thrown in his eyes after that. Then he was being punched and had many objects thrown at him. As he says that he was quoted saying a slur that he never said. Will this man get any justice? Will he get any compensation? Will there be any accountability here? Most likely not. As of course, the mainstream media by and large chooses to ignore these larger events and focus on these perverted issues as expressed and promoted by the Washington Post that had a piece that said, quote, yes, kink belongs at Pride and I want my kids to see it. In a way, promoting unspeakable activities with children, which is all a part of the woke establishment ideology, which is being forced down everyone's throat. An ideology that is being fully backed and supported by the upper echelons of the establishment, by the multinational corporations, by the big banks, by the intelligence agencies, by the mainstream media, and of course by the U.S. military, where we have insane examples of woke virtue signaling that are mandatory as the U.S. Navy just had one of its unit force its soldiers to take part in a mandatory diversity hike where they had to wave an LGBT flag. And it's not just if you're in the military, you're indoctrinated with this ideology. This is also, of course, widely supported in many public schools that now openly, a part of this woke ideology, support racial segregation, discrimination against white students who are told to hate themselves because of the way that they were born. 
To add that to the confusion, some teachers are even banned from saying boys and girls. And this is the type of environment that the future children of this country are being raised in, which is creating a group of mentally ill children that are becoming more mentally ill and more dangerous as they grow older, as perfectly represented by this verified Twitter user that openly declared that white people should, quote, please stop sending private messages of support and agreement because, quote, private support is violent. <laughs> yes, this Twitter user literally is saying private messages of support of this woke doctrine of the SJW ideology is violent, which perfectly goes into the play of the larger globalist elite billionaire banking class that wants to ban speech because it's violent. Yes, that's the larger, larger ideology out there that has been working in favor of the ruling establishment. Deeming speech is violence is an absolutely draconian, idiotic proposition that is meant to set up a totalitarian Big Brother Orwellian state where you have virtually no freedoms. The World Economic Forum knows this. This is why they have been the largest promote proponents and creators of this great reset ideology where they literally prophesize about people owning nothing and having no privacy. Now the World Economic Forum has just launched their new initiative to quote, tackle harmful online content. Now what is this harmful online content well again very generalized open word garbage pushed on by these billionaire globalists that want to make sure that no one can criticize them in short that's exactly what they're saying here with all the problems happening in this world with so much poverty with so much hunger so many medical issues so many cancers rising so many bastardized corrupt large institutions like the medical industry the big pharma industry the prison industry i could keep going and going and i could keep go on forever the main problem for the world economic forum is speech people being able to talk to each other freely and now they're going to be working on implementing a new framework for quote digital safety of bad words to quote minimize exposure to risks encountered on the internet you know risks most likely like critical thinking like being able to entertain and look at information without any billionaire banker telling you what you can and cannot listen to again this is absolute insanity to think that there's extremely powerful people out there that are coming to you and saying no 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 every piece of information needs to pass through me for you to hear it for your own safety and that's an absolute insane idea that will lead to the destruction of free humanity and only create future human enslavement and who's promoting and who's pushing these ideas who's pushing to ban more speech well these crazy ideologue woke priests that are talking about how misgendering and micro expressions are quote violent and that's an absolutely absurd idea and this whole system is predicated on the mental illness of people who are being emotionally abused in indoctrination centers that we call public schools while physically being attacked by processed foods heavy sugar intake gmos and absolute garbage that they intake which creates even a bigger mental health crisis that a lot of the global globalist billionaires need in order to push their wider agenda of full total supremacy and domination of the free human spirit in related news the world economic forum is also launching cyber polygon literal online war games simulating cyber attacks and hacks with leaders from around the world and as the world economic forum becomes more instrumental in every aspect of our existence pushing these larger globalistic policies that only benefit the billionaire class they're also urging people to fire anyone who dares not to take a medical procedure that they demand you to take total control total subversion of your free will is the end goal and i am absolutely not for it and we need to speak out against it while we still can because if these people have their way they're already let's be honest here having their way in many examples of being able to just censor spy on intimidate and harass and to essentially even eliminate a lot of criticism that they get the voices that speak out against them are more important than ever and your participation in sharing those voices is critical to the sustainability of this operation and simply you double clicking the url sending this to your friends family members loved ones neighbors strangers people at the supermarket doesn't matter 
wherever you walk into, sharing either this video or articles from this video, or even just the latest developments of what's happening in this world is absolutely crucial to the sustainability of free will, of being able to think and to talk without anyone trying to shut you up for just expressing an idea. Once you close down ideas, once you close down speech, once you, once you close down thought, you essentially don't have life. That's my particular take on it. What's yours? Let me know down in the comment section below. I wouldn't be here again sharing these videos. So key. Uh, if it wasn't for you guys doing this, and this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.